Hey you guys! In today's video, we will explain in detail how to install and set up Big Tree Tech's RRFE3 board. You want to know more? Then stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, a few days ago, we made a video showing the recently released board from Big Tree Tech, the RRF E3. This board is equipped with a 32-bit STM32F407 ARM Cortex microcontroller, four non-replaceable TMC's 2209 drivers, and an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. It was designed to be a plug-and-play solution for the Creality Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 5 and 5 Pro. The board has all the same connectors as the stock Creality 1 and a few additional ones, such as BL Touch, a TFT display, filament runout sensor, power detection, relay, and RGB. Next to each driver, you can find jumpers to enable or disable the driver's diag pin for the sensorless homing feature. If you want to keep the stock and stop switches, leave these pins without jumpers. There are two more pins on the board and these are to select the source of the 5V circuit. If you install a jumper on the left pins, the 5V will be sourced from the internal DC step-down converter. If you install the jumper on the right pins, the 5V will be sourced from the USB line. This means you cannot have both jumpers installed at the same time. For normal use, keep the jumper installed only at the left side. The USB connector on this board is a different type from what we are used to with the Ender 3 boards. On this one, we have a micro USB type, which is what most printers on the market currently use. Our board is the first version, the V1.0, and the manufacturer already released version 1.1. The difference between these two versions is only with the expansion connector pins located at the back where in version 1.0 they have a ground here at this pin and in version 1.1 they have 3.3 volts instead. For the upgrade that we will show in this video, we will not need this connector. So, if you have version 1.1, don't worry because the procedure is the same. Okay, start by turning off the printer and open the board's cover panel. On the Creality Ender 3, the panel is located at the top and on the Ender 3 Pro, the cover panel is located at the bottom. Carefully take the panel out and disconnect the board cooling fan. Some wires have tags on them, but some don't. So make sure you label the ones that don't before disconnecting all of them. Now you can disconnect everything and remove the four screws that secure the board. As you can see, both boards have the same size and most of the connectors on the old board are located on the same place on the new board. Before installing the new board, we recommend three things. One is to install the Wi-Fi antenna first. Second, we always mention this in our tutorials and is related with the wires that don't have connectors. Some manufacturers and Creality included normally tin these wires with solder. This is not a good idea and can cause several issues. The best procedure is to crimp ferrules on these wires, as they will make a better and secure electrical connection. You can crimp the wires for the fan that is always on together with the power wires. The stock Ender 3 hot and fan is always on, so if you want to keep the same setup, you can crimp the wires together. And third, 
is to connect the 24 volt wires from the power supply and heat bed wires before installing the board. It will be much easier this way. For the power supply wires, connect the red, which is the positive, near the fuse, and the black, which is the negative, near the corner of the board. For the heat bed, the red is at the right and the black is at the left. OK, now we can install the board and secure it with the same four screws. Be careful with the Wi-Fi antenna and make sure it doesn't get pinched in the process. The connector for the hot end heater wires can be pulled out, so it's much easier. These wires don't have polarity, so you can connect them either way. And then, connect back the hot end heater connector. Next are the fans. For the layer cooling fan, which is the one with the blue and yellow wires, you need to connect to the fan zero connector. As for the fan that is attached to the panel and cools down the board, it's connected to the fan one connector. These two fan outputs are PWM controlled, so you can program the fan one output to control the hot end fan instead. If you do that, you need to connect the cover panel fan directly to 24 volts. Next, connect the X axis end stop, the Y axis end stop, and if you are not using any leveling sensor, the Z axis end stop. Then connect the heat bed thermistor and the hot end thermistor. The board also includes the traditional connector for the stock Ender 3 display. The display will work with Marlin and thanks to Jay from Team Gloomy that shared with us the pin configuration for the stock display, we can now use it while running RipRap firmware as well. For that to work, we need to change a few things in our RipRap configuration, but we will explain in more detail in a few minutes. If you have a leveling sensor, you can connect it here. The standard connector that normally comes with the BL Touch sensors doesn't fit perfectly on the board's connector. So, for a better connection, get one of these 5 pins, JST female connectors and pins, and replace the original one with this one. The black and white trigger wires are connected at the right, and the probe wires are connected to the left. If you have a big 3TAC touch display, you can connect it here. At the back of the TFT display, you need to connect the flat cable on the EXP3 connector and the serial cable on the RS232 connector. On the other end of the serial cable, there is a 5-pin connector where one of them is separated from the other four. This one is the reset pin. So we use this one as reference to connect the cable like this. Then we have the filament runout sensor. If you have a sensor to detect filament, you can connect it here. The left pin is for signal, the pin at the middle is for ground, and the right pin is for voltage. Next is the power detection. If you have a UPS module, you can connect here. The left pin is signal, the middle pin is ground, and the right pin is voltage. Next to the power detection is a connector for a relay. If you have a relay, you can connect it here. The left pin is ground and the right pin is signal. And if you have RGB lights, you can connect them here. The left pin is ground, the middle pin is signal and the right pin is voltage. Last but not least are the stepper motor connectors. First is the X-axis stepper motor, then the Y-axis, and then the Z axis. For the Z, if you only have one Z stepper motor, you can connect on any of the two outputs. Finally is the extruder stepper motor. As for the Wi-Fi antenna, you can pass it outside using the side openings and then glue it to the side panel. Okay, 
all done. Now, with RipRap firmware, you will always need to have a memory card inserted because it will need to read the configuration files every time it starts. So, before we can turn the printer on, we need to copy some files to the memory card for it to work. For the Big Tree Tech board, the firmware for both microcontroller and ESP module came already installed from factory. However, if you need to install a more recent version, here's how you can do it. First, you need to download the firmware bin files. You can get them from Big Tree Tech's GitHub page or from Team Gloomy's website. You can check below in the video description for all the links. For the microcontroller, download the one that has STM32F4 and ESP8266 on the name. The file name that we need to have in the memory card must be firmware.bin, so you need to rename it. This one must be on the root of the memory card. And for the ESP, download the one that has STM32F4 on the name. The file name that we need to have in the memory card must be duetwifiserver.bin, so you need to rename this one as well. This one must be inside a folder with the name firmware. Next, you need to create the folder structure and copy all the configuration files to the memory card. If you are downloading the files from Big Tree Tech, just copy these ones. If you are using the online configurator, you will need to copy the config files as mentioned here on the website. One important note regarding the board's firmware is if you choose to use this version of Team Gloomy's or other future releases, make sure you have board 1.1 in the board.txt file and not 1.0, otherwise it will not work. If you want to use the stock in the 3 display, you will need to do the following. Open the board.txt file with an editor, write these lines in it, and save the file. Next, open the config.g file with an editor, and write this line at the end, and save the file. In the root of the memory card, create a folder with the name menu, and then go to this website, download the menu files, extract them, and copy them to the menu folder. If you want to use the touch display from Big Tree Tech, like this one for example, you will also need to update the display, otherwise you will get the no printer attached message. If you don't care about the touch mode and only use the normal mode, then you don't need to do this next step. So here's how to do that. Go to Big Tree Tech's GitHub page and download the TFT update files. In there, you can find a couple of config.ini files. This file is used for RepRap firmware, and this one is used for Maron. So, to make things easier, get a different memory card, select the correct bin file that matches your display, and copy to the root of the memory card. Then copy the config file. Don't forget to rename the one for RepRap to config.ini and then copy the matching TFT folder that contains all the icons for your display to the root of the memory card. Now, insert the memory card in the TFT's memory slot located at the back and turn on the printer. The display will automatically update itself. When done, turn off the printer, remove the memory card and install back the display. If you decide to use the TFT display with Marlin firmware, don't forget to change the config INI file and update the TFT. Ok, now, insert the memory card in the board's memory card slot and turn the printer on. The microcontroller's firmware will be automatically updated while the printer is booting. For the ESP, you need to connect the computer to the board using a USB cable and run a terminal software. You can use printer face, for example, or if your slicer has terminal option, you can use it as well. In a few seconds, the computer should recognize the board automatically. You can confirm if the board is being recognized by your operating system using the device manager. Here, you can also check which port number is being used. And then, connect the terminal to the board using the correct port number. In this case, our terminal will start communicating with the board 
and from here we know that the communication is working. Other terminals might not do that, so in that case you can type M115 and enter and check if you get a reply back. Next, type M997 space S1. This will tell the ESP module to update the firmware. Now we need to program the network's SSID and password so that the ESP module can use the Wi-Fi. First, switch the ESP module state to idle using the command M552 space S0 and enter. To enter the credentials, you use the M587 command followed by space, then S, open quotes, here you enter your SSID name, close quotes, space, then the letter P, open quotes, and then you type your password, close quotes again, and type enter. Some terminals like Pronterface, for example, will ignore lowercase letters and send everything in capital letters. So, if your credentials have lowercase letters, then you need to add a single quote before each lowercase letter like this. Next, turn the ESP module on again by using the command M552 space S1 and enter. From this point on, the ESP should connect to your network. To access the DWC, just open an internet browser and type in the IP address of the ESP module. If you have your stock Ender 3 display connected and configured, you can check the IP address that was acquired on the display. And this is the DWC. From here, you can control your printer. In the video description below, you can also find links to detailed instructions on how to use the DWC. The first thing we recommend to do is to check if everything is working correctly. Keep your finger ready on the off switch in case something is not correctly set up and you need to stop the machine. You can start by checking your temperature readings. And then turn on the nozzle and bed heaters. Next, home each axis individually to confirm that the motors are turning in the right direction and that the end stops, if you are using them, are being correctly triggered. You can then move each axis back and forth to confirm that they are moving the correct amount. Finally, you can check if the layer cooling fan is running when moving the fan slider. From this point on, you can run all your calibrations and then, if everything is working ok, you can then start your first print with this new board. As we mentioned in the beginning, this board is also compatible with Marlin firmware. So, if you want to replace RipRap with Marlin, here's how you can do it. On the same Big Tree Tech's GitHub page, you can also find Marlin firmware. You have it already compiled or raw if you want to modify it. The procedure is the same as other 32-bit boards. You need to get Visual Studio Code and Platform I.O. Load the firmware from Big Tree Tech and modify what you need. To compile it, make sure you use the environment bigtree underscore e3 underscore rrf. The compiled firmware will be a .bin file, same as the already compiled ones that Bigtree Tech has here. Just copy the firmware.bin file to the memory card, place it in the printer's memory card slot and turn the printer on. The board will then update the firmware automatically. And that's it you guys! Close the cover panel and you're set to go. Hope you liked the video and please don't forget to give it a like and share the video. We will see you guys next time. Bye!